one of the things I have to do in order to get this re working and do the conversion is to modify my RV converter box. Now this was just a power converter with battery charger but it was only a 3 amp battery charger which is pitiful and quite useless. So I want to keep the AC lines, the breakers, and the DC fuses in here though. So I need to come up with a way to cut this some this thing out, but leaving the uh, all the wires intact, so that I don't have to reroute and rewire and refuse everything. This is already here and it's convenient. It, most of the guts of these things is in the bottom, so I'm going to open this up and see what's in here and see if I can pull out the AC converter unit there and, and, and leaving the rest intact so that I can continue using the DC lines. So um, I'll do that. I won't be able to record to do this very limited light that I have here um, down in this hole. So I'll uh, be back with you in a little bit here. Actually I changed my mind and decided I do want to show you what I do here. Hope it shows up right on the video. Since this is actually a very important part of converting an RV to solar. Oh, that just drops off the panel. All the AC junk is up inside there. It's filthy. Wow, it's dirty. I want to try to get this out. How can I get this out of here? I think I can remove this box, I'm hoping, and pull the guts of the AC unit out. Now there is no AC attached, so I should be pretty safe doing this. Now this is a transform that converts 120 AC to 12 volts, which is then converted to DC for charging your batteries and for running your lights and onboard DC equipment. Um, from what I've understood, it's not well regulated, and it's a very poor charging system, and uh, most people pull these out and put a high quality charger slash inverter system in these anyway. So this is coming out. i got to get a screwdriver. Hopefully this whole unit should slide out. Hopefully not disturbing my my wires. Okay, I've got some main DC lines coming in that I'll have to disconnect from here. So blue is your main positive to your fuses. That's right here, so that's going to be hot. Let me check it with a meter. Blue, I'm thinking, is going to be hot. Yes, blue is hot. You got to be careful with that wire. So this is a hot wire. That's got to come off. Red, it looks like it's on the other side of that. It's probably hot. And white is probably your ground. But white is the main ground up inside there. No, I've got, it looks like five wires I have to pull out of here in order to pull this converter box out. What I've got, you can see this well enough, I've got the, uh, this is nicely marked for you, this is the converter hot. This is the AC hot wire. I'm going to leave that nut on so that wire doesn't fall off. This would be the AC neutral, I guess it was called. Pop them off. That'll allow them those wires to come out there. This would be your DC ground wire. Because that is the power switch box right there. That switches from shore power to battery operation 
as needed. When the converter kicks on, I believe it disconnects that from the battery power. So I'm going to disconnect the ground. And I'm going to tape these wires before I remove anything. Now the blue wire is actually your accessory power wire that runs all of your, your stuff in here. And the red, I believe, comes out of the out from the battery box. And then the red was running through. And later if I jump these two together, I'll have my power back on. It's awkward working in these confined spaces. And I'm going to install my inverter. To do that I had to remove the AC box. You have to feed these wires up through these little tiny holes in here in order to get this out. Up and out of the box. And here it's going to be a little bit tighter. It's actually going to be very tight to work with this space here. Again, disconnect your batteries when you work so you don't short anything out as you squeeze these wires through these tiny holes. Okay, I have all the wires pulled out here and taped off safely. I've got the AC wires out over here, so this should hopefully slide out if my guesses are correct with the wiring on this. It should slide right out, I hope. And there it is, yes. It came right out. Very nice. So, too bad I don't have any light in here to show you, but there is there is the box. That is the converter box right there. That's it. You can see some uh, filth on there through the years, but there is the actual converter box. Let's see if I can try to get some light on here and hold the camera and show you. That was it. It just came right out. Nice and neat. And uh, actually, some people suggest throwing these away, but I am going to use the parts in this. There's some nice parts in here. This senses when the shore power is plugged in to the control box and disconnects your batteries from the 12 volt line and allows the transformer to supply the power to your 12 volt accessories in, on board here. There it is. That's out of the way. Now I'm going to try to rig up my wire so I have power in here again from my battery so I can continue working because I am off the grid. I do not have any power besides what I provide myself. I am living in the forest in the middle of the forest off the grid. So there's my main ground that came out of the control box. Uh, I still do have power right here obviously. Uh, if you can see my LED light is plugged in. I still have power right here in this fuse box. Uh, you may hear saws running in the background. I got friends helping on the property today but I have power running to here. That's obvious with this. So these lines are still hot. This is the ground wire coming in, probably running straight off to the battery. So I need to connect these two wires in order to get power to the accessories. This this fuse box here now has no power, and that would that was this blue wire. So if I connect these two together, I should have power back in here again. Now, get my trusty voltmeter here. I should have power. I believe the red is power. Let me see. And ground. 
yes, there I have power on the red. Now the blue is probably my accessory and has no power. Correct. If I connect these two, my lights turn back on. There we go. See my light? Turn back on. Disconnect. Lights off. So that there needs to be jumpered together in order for my battery box to power the onboard lighting in the RV. So I need to get a uh, temporary, I'm going to use a twist, one of those screw-on terminal heads until I can do this better. Alright, connecting the inverter power to the RV control box, what I've done is I have a battery box up here where the batteries will be. I've run a wire up through the top and I'm going to put a AC plug on there. The wire runs down through the floor all the way through the RV underneath the flooring and into the original control box. Now you remember I showed you that I removed the guts of this control box and took out the AC to DC converter and now I've, I'm left with the DC fuses and power lines which is still hooked up to the lights with that jumpered wire I put on there and the AC circuit breakers are still in place and what I'm going to do I've got the wire up to the floor here and what I'm going to do is come into the junction box of the AC unit now here this RV has a generator and the wire from the generator comes through and into this is one set of wires and goes into a uh, I believe there's probably an automated switch in here to shut off the shore power and disconnect it if the, it senses the generator kick on so what I'm doing is I'm going to wire in there's the shore power box coming in from outside where you would plug into a campground and I'm following that wire in and I'm going to tie in my inverter to the shore power wires because now my AC in my camper is going to be powered by my inverter power so I'm about to hook that up right now now I've run the wire that I brought into the RV myself up into the power box and I've twist tied it in to where the shore power line comes in. Now this goes into my inverter on the other end of the RV. So now I'm going to tape these off for safety and to make sure it's extra secure and push them back down and put the cover back on and then I'll wire up the inverter side. Now just to show this one more time, the new one comes up through the floor and runs into the distribution box here. And I put the original wire retainers here in place. I just ran that along next to this one and uh, I didn't tighten, I didn't over tighten, I just put it snug and taped everything up so it's safe. Now I'm going to leave this open for my testing uh, just to make sure everything's safe and secure. Now over here I've run the AC wire that comes from the control box that I just showed you up in through my battery box that I built and it comes up and I've built a cord that plugs into the inverter. Now my inverter doesn't have the screw-in connectors, it has a plug-in connector, just a normal AC plug. So I've done it like this and um, secured it up with some extra tape just to be safe. I should have used heat shrink tubing but uh, that was an afterthought and it's really rigid. This is really high current line so it'll take anything I throw at it and then some. And there it is. There's how you convert your your uh, AC DC control box into AC power running off solar.